All right, so we got everything out of here and we cleaned off. There's actually some RTV on the head here from the valve cover, uh, especially right here. It's actually part of the gasket. You're supposed to put RTV on there. We cleaned everything off and we actually did the valve seals. We're not going to show you in this video. We'll have another video for that. It was pretty extensive. Um, but now it's finally time to install the cams. So if you get these cams, these are Brian Crower cams. If you don't know which one goes where, um, actually back here on the cam, it'll say EX for exhaust and IN for intake, so that's how you know. Exhaust cam on this side, intake cam on this side, and you're not supposed to install these dry, so we're gonna cover these in oil before we put the cam caps on. So this is the engine oil that we're gonna use. We're using Rotella T. And then you want to spread the oil all over the can. Get the part where it makes contact, especially when the cap's really lubed up. You do not want these to be dry. That will cause excessive wear and could possibly cause your engine to go bang. Now you can change your gloves. So according to the factory service manual, you're supposed to install cap three and seven, then install the cam seal, and then you can install the rest of the caps. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. This is cap three. And cap seven. And it also says you're supposed to apply oil to the threads on these, so that's what we're gonna do. And right here we have a paint cap that actually filled with oil. Try not to spill this oil. If you spilled this cap, it'd make a mess. I'm just starting the threads on these. I'm not actually tightening them or torquing them yet. Okay, now the factory service manual says when to install caps three and seven to apply grease to the lip of these cam seals. So that's what I'm doing. And if you look at them, this side is kind of open and there's a spring inside. This, the side where you can see the spring goes towards the cam. The side that isn't open really goes facing the front. And these aren't side dependent, so it doesn't matter which cam you put these on. And slide it in. Sorry you can't really see it because of this, but it's the same on both sides. Push it all the way in until it's recessed behind this groove. Now before you can install the caps that go up here on the seals, you have to put RTV or silicone gasket maker along, along the ridge right here. Once you get your RTV on there, your silicone, apply some oil and make sure you have it facing the correct way.
and then do the same thing to the other side. Got the silicone on. Okay, now we're going to install the rest of the cam caps and then we have to tighten them in a specific order according to the factory service manual and I'll go over that with you once we install all the other caps. Okay, now according to the factory service manual, we have to tighten these evenly and we start off with three and then go to seven, three, seven, five, four, six, two, and one. So that's what we're gonna do. And these get tightened down to 14 foot-pounds. And you want to tighten each of these bolts evenly so they don't get cockeyed. Okay, so we torqued all these to 14 foot-pounds in the factory service manual order, and now we're just gonna go over it one time, and then we'll do the same process on the other cam. So we didn't get to film it, but we actually got the harmonic balancer off with a harmonic balancer pulley puller. So here's the balancer, and now we can remove the front timing cover and take the timing belt off and replace the timing belt. So to get to one of the bolts for the timing cover, we have to take off the water pump pulley, and it looks like we might have to take off the belt tensioner, which I really don't want to do. Ah, I lost my nut. I got a nut. I'm glad you always got my nuts. So we do have to take off the serpentine belt tensioner. Move the tensioner. And your front cover will just fall right off, apparently. And then you can remove your stock shitty timing belt. Now we're going to reinstall this uh, cover, whatever it's called. I don't even know what it's called. Next, we get to install our freshly powder coated cam gears. Now, you want to install these with right here, there's like a little dot on it. You want this facing out because that's how you line it up with the correct timing marks. Ugh. Oh, fucking protein farts. You gotta poop it yourself. I might. I got white. Oh, you need to get out of here, that's terrible. You might die. Now these get torqued to 60 foot pounds. You might have to put another wrench or something on the cam to hold it still. All right, so you have to put a wrench or something on the cam 
right here where it's got a hex on it to hold it to torque these. You have to torque them to 60 foot pounds. Now vice grips aren't the preferred method, but that's all we have. So now we're gonna try to get them to 60 foot pounds. Got it. Got it. Nice work. Alrighty, now we can install the new timing belt. Okay, so we got these all torqued to spec and they feel pretty good. I made sure I lubed up everything when I assembled this, so it's all pretty well lubricated. And it feels really good. Now we can try to install the timing belt, which might be a task. So before you install the timing belt, you have to line your cam gears up with the top dead center marks, because that's what we did when we took it off. Okay, so we got the new timing belt on the, the crank down there. We installed the new harmonic balancer, but it's not completely on, so we have to tighten the crank bolt to reinstall it. And now we torque it. Okay, now we have to go underneath the car and tighten up the tensioner and this should be good. Okay, so we tighten up the tensioner. This belt is pretty tight. Now I'm just gonna turn the crank just to make sure everything seems well. It sounded like one of those things from Halo. <laughs> the elites. The little elites, yeah. <laughs> You all right? Yeah. I think I made it. Okay. That's not good. Good thing we did that. Cause this cam is off. That's that center? Yeah. Okay, so we did a full we did two full rotations on the crank to make sure this lined up and it doesn't. This pulley is one tooth off of the timing mark. We had the crank at bottom dead center. This pulley's lined up, this one's not. So basically this belt or this pulley has to make a shift. So we're gonna mark on the crank pulley and the belt here, because that's good. But this pulley needs to come over one tooth, so we're gonna mark it one tooth over. Actually, it needs to be like that. Mark on that, and then a mark there. Okay, so we corrected the timing belt. We have all the timing marks marked up. Uh, the harmonic balancer's on zero. These are both on their top dead center mark. Now the factory service manual says to apply silicone gasket maker on both sides of these cam caps here before you install the valve cover. So that's what we're gonna do. Now that you applied the silicone, remove your old gasket from your valve covers. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the water pump pulley and the belt tensioner.
Now we can install this awesome clear timing cover. Boom, I freaking love it. Now install your coil packs. Install your spark plug cover. Okay, once you get all this on, you can reinstall the serpentine belt and your radiator hose. In this case, I actually made my own hard pipe. Um, I Instead of buying a $110 one, I took a drain pipe from my local hardware store, put it on there, trimmed off about four inches, and then trimmed the factory radiator hose off of here and used the radiator hose as couplers. So now I've got my own hard pipe. I still need to put two more hose clamps on there. But now once you have your radiator hose on, you can re-add the coolant that you took out previously, if you called it. Or add new coolant. Okay, we got the serpentine belt on, radiator hose, everything's buttoned up. Now I am charging the battery and hopefully when I try to start it, it doesn't blow up. It runs! It didn't blow up! Yet! Alright, so there you go. Brian Crower 264 cams in this 1JZ. It didn't blow up yet. Um, it sounded really good. Um, it's running pretty good. Um, the only thing I need is two more hose clamps for my radiator hose because um, I only have two and it needs four because I made my radiator pipe. But this installation took a long time, especially because we did the valve stem seals. Um, I would say it was kind of difficult. It wasn't really that hard to do. It just takes a lot of time. I would say, including the valve seals, this was maybe a 25 to 30 hour job. Um, obviously, it would make it look a lot easier on camera, but there were a lot of things that went wrong, like trying to match up the timing belt because we had it off a tooth, and it was just a bunch of finagling with that, and the timing belt tensioner, there was some finagling with that. Um, even with the valve cover gaskets, they kept falling off, so, I mean, if everything went smoothly, this could take you 10 hours or less, but so many things on this we had to do two, three, or four times because little things kept going wrong. It's just stupid, annoying stuff. But if you're going to do this, I highly recommend following the factory service manual. We basically showed you everything on how to do this for the 1JZ. There is one thing that we did not film on how to position the cams in the car. You have to have them at a certain degree so you don't break them when you tighten them down. So I still recommend following the factory service manual for this engine even if you watch this video and especially if you haven't done it before because there may have been things that we missed and it's just going to give you a lot more knowledge. You can just find the factory service manual anywhere on the internet. So definitely look that up before you jump into it. The only really special tool that you need to do this is a torque wrench or the torque adapter that we used. Um, you can check out the review video on that right here. Um, it's a really awesome tool. You can pick it up at JMB Tool Sales. But other than that, like, this wasn't, like, doing this, there aren't really any tricks to doing it other than the, f the correct way to torque down the cams. Like, a lot of it is just taking stuff off and putting stuff on. Everything is just bolt on. The only thing that might take a little bit of skill is properly placing the silicone, maybe, and torquing down the cam caps or cam bearings, whatever you want to call them. But if you follow the factory service manual or follow what we said in this video, you should be fine. So with that being said, I can't wait to take this car out and drive it. We're probably going to go get it dyno tuned. I'm hoping this car can make around 450 horsepower. Um, I think... Theoretically and mathematically, 
the injectors in this car, the 540ccs, I think they max out around 430 or something like that. And with the cams, that should get us a little bit closer to 450. And uh, apparently these engines can handle 500 horsepower or 700 whatever on just the stock engine. So we haven't touched the bottom end of it. Um, I don't plan on going more than 450 horsepower. Once we get, if we get this to 450, to get any higher, we're gonna have to upgrade the turbo without a doubt, and definitely touch the bottom end of the engine. But that's another video. I can't wait to drive this. Can't wait to get it dyno tuned. So I hope you enjoyed this series. Hope you learned something. Um, if you didn't, tell me I'm stupid. Tell me fuck you, whatever. Um, tell me to shut my face. And I will see you guys next time.